You know what really impressed me about the movie In a Violent Nature? Well, it wasn't the cinematography, it wasn't the concept, wasn't even the special effects, but what it really was, the marketing. I go to the movies regularly and I had only seen one trailer, one poster, but I'd also seen a shitload of people on social media that got free screeners that claimed that this movie was the greatest thing that they had ever seen before in their lives. Like, I kid you not, I felt like the only jerk that didn't get a screener. So, well, I'm Mike the Movie Misfit. It's Shutter Saturday. So let's talk about In a Violent Nature. So this is a story about Jason... I mean, Johnny? Well, Johnny died wrongfully and his mother's necklace was left at his final resting place. A group of teens go to the woods and they see Johnny's final resting place and they decide to take Johnny's necklace. Johnny rises from the grave to seek and destroy whoever stole his mother's precious necklace. The movie isn't really taking the point of view of Johnny, but more like following directly behind him. We've actually seen this done before in other movies. That's right, you've seen it before in other films such as Jaws 2, Halloween 1 through 2, and the original Black Christmas. The only major difference is in a violent nature does it the entire time without a score, without a soundtrack, just basically nature sounds and footsteps. <laughs> so in a violent nature reminded me of this documentary about the movie Halloween where John Carpenter talks about how the movie was done but he didn't have the music just yet. It didn't work without the music and interestingly enough I showed it to an executive from 20th but I didn't have the music on it. And she said this is not frightening. There's nothing scary about this movie. In a violent nature kind of feels like a cross between Friday the 13th and the movie Hatchet. And you can definitely tell the filmmakers were paying like a tribute to Friday the 13th, which makes me kind of wonder why they named the killer Johnny and not Josh, since Josh was Jason's name originally before they changed it to Jason. Makes me wonder if they even knew that. I did appreciate the idea for the film, but I do think the idea could only work for so long. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie, there were times during the movie where I felt like I was playing a video game and I decided not to follow the map or the arrows and decided to go off grid and get lost. I do think the idea of no music and just nature sounds can provide some eerie dread, but I do have to agree with Carpenter. Sometimes you actually do need music, even if it's just one note. Like, could you imagine this scene from Halloween Part 2 where we follow Michael Myers? but we don't have any music, it would probably be like this. <gasps> I do appreciate what the movie was trying to do, but I feel like it lost its charm and that may be because it was 15 to 25 minutes too long. And seriously, those last 15 to 20 minutes, you could either go to the bathroom or boil some eggs because you're not gonna miss anything. For me, in a violent nature doesn't really have any rewatch value. If I want to watch a Friday the 13th movie, I'm going to watch a Friday the 13th movie. If I want to watch a newer one, I'm going to watch Never Hike Alone. And if I want something else that's kind of Friday the 13th-ish, I'm going to watch the Hatchet series. Now seriously, I can see this movie being played on multiple screens at someone's house at a horror hipster party. Oh, I could definitely see some horror hipsters standing in clusters drinking their honey oak beer talking about what's the most disturbing movie they've ever seen. Is it the movie Martyrs? But if anyone dares to bring up this movie right here, they'll be asked to leave the party kindly. But before they do that, they'll get a complimentary bag of quinoa on their way out. I didn't think in a violent nature was anything groundbreaking, but it was showcasing some great cinematography, great locations for her Friday the 13th movie, great practical effects. The kills weren't bad, they were actually pretty good, but I feel like I've seen that times 100 in one hatchet movie. When we did get characters, sometimes they were okay, and some of the exposition that they would do actually worked, but sometimes it also felt very unnatural. <laughs> so I got a confession to make. So every time Johnny put the mask on, I really couldn't take him seriously because every time I would look at him, he would look like the deep diver from either the Scooby-Doo cartoon or one of the minions. My rating for In a Violent Nature is I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, but I definitely feel like it was overrated by people who haven't seen a lot of horror movies, and I'll probably forget about this movie pretty soon. All right, so hopefully it wasn't too harsh, and I did give a lot of compliments on the movie, but I really wanted to be honest, and just because I don't like something doesn't mean you won't like it. So, in a violent nature, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was overhyped? Please comment below and let me know. I'm Mike the Movie Misfit, always reviewing Shudder Originals every Saturday, and please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the movies. Mm -hmm.